Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. We've been talking about the basics of solving non-right triangles and we're going to be focusing on the law of sines and what we're talking about here is non-right triangles are acute triangles or obtuse triangles. Acute triangles are obviously all three angles are less than 90 and an obtuse triangle has one angle greater than 90. Now in those two cases you will be using the law of sines to find some missing parts. Now the law of sines is these ratios as I've mentioned in a previous video and we have the sine of an angle over the opposite side length and it's three ratios that are all related here or you can flip them upside down and make them look like that. In these cases here I'm going to give you four problems to try and the information that you're given is going to be angle, angle and a non-included side or angle, angle with an included side. Okay. And in that case, you know that you can use the law of sines. Here we go. Let's give it a try. All right, number three and four. Let's start with those. You're given the following information. Notice how it's labeled. And you're looking for angle B on number three and angle A on number four. Use the law of sines and figure it out. All right, as you know in these problem sets, I expect that you try these on a piece of paper and you know that I'll be explaining them after you um, try them and I'll pause for a moment or two and see if you can get them right. Well, number three, we have the answer angle B is 56.1 degrees. In number four, angle A, which is way up here, but we'll put the label here, 24.1. Well, let's see how we get those answers. All right, in looking at the information we're given, we notice we have angle C and its opposite side, 37. So we can use the C's and we can use the B's because we're looking for angle B and we are given the side B, which is opposite that angle, okay? So if we plug that in, we have the C ratios and the B ratios, and sine C, we can go ahead and calculate that by putting in 82 and clicking on the sine function. The sine of 82 degrees is 0 0.99026. Now we're going to round to four digits, which is pretty standard, and let's do that 0 0.9903. 0 0.9903. All right, let's cross multiply. That gives us this. Of course, we want to divide now by 37. And now, Sine B equals 0.8297. Now that's just a, a trig function value, so now we have to do the inverse sine to figure out what the measure of the angle is. Let's take a look here. The sine, the inverse sine of 0.8297, this is how you write it out, equals the answer that we want. Put that in your calculator. Look for the sine minus one. If you don't see it, go for either a shift or an inverse button and do the inverse sine value. 56.067, which is going to be 56.1 degrees. All right, number four. Let's see what kind of information we have here. We have the A parts and the B parts, don't we? We're looking for angle A, so we can write sine A, its opposite side is 14, and sine of 74, which is at angle B there, and we do know the opposite side is 33. So on a calculator, let's go ahead and figure out sine of 74. Type in 74. We don't want inverse sine, we want the regular sine function. And it's 0 0.9613, 0 0.9613. So write that in, in our proportion. Now we're going to cross multiply. Now we want to divide both sides by 33.
So sine A equals 0 0.4078, rounded to four significant digits. How do we find the actual angle measure? That's right, that's the inverse sine. So we would write it as sine minus one of that decimal value, 0 0.4078. And we'll put that into our calculator and see what angle A actually is. All right, let's take a look. So let me clear the previous number and we're going to put in 0 0.4078. Do the shift sign minus 1 and it says 24.066 which is 24.1. All right, let's try two more problems using the law of sines. Number 5, find length AB and number 6, find length BC. Go ahead and hit pause and give it a try. All right, so let's not get confused by the labeling here, but you notice that we have, um, we're looking for angle AB, which is going to be opposite angle C, so that's little uh, lowercase c. Okay, we want to make sure that we label that. Also over here, CB is opposite angle A, so that's going to be lowercase a. All right, that'll help us with our law of signs. So you see the answers here. Number five is 35 and number six is 18. Now, an interesting thing on number five is that we're missing a little bit of information here. You notice that we have angle C and side C, but then we've got some problems. What we're going to need to do is figure out what angle A is. And because we know two of the three angles of a triangle, we know that it has to be 59 degrees. All right, that's going to set up our law of sines. So in this case, we're going to use the C values here and the A values. Okay, sine of 59 degrees is 0.8572, sine of 90 is 1. Now let's cross multiply. And you can kind of follow my calculations here. Uh, we're going to be dividing by this decimal value now. And you notice C is 35. All right, so a little example of maybe filling in some missing information to make the law of sines work. In the next problem, notice the missing angle would have to be 86 degrees because all three angles add up to 180. I know the opposite side from angle B is 20, and so we're going to use that for our law of sines. This gives us the two ratios from angle B and angle A. Now on our calculator, we're going to figure out the sine value of 86 degrees and 64 degrees and put them right there. There they are filled in, and now let's cross multiply. You can follow my calculations here, and we're going to divide by 0.9976 on both sides. And that will give us our A value. So A equals 18. Now you notice we don't have to do an inverse function at all because it's a side length. We're not looking for an angle. All right. Thanks for watching this video. I hope these examples have helped you out. Now look for the next video, which has to do with the law of cosines. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard.